So our uh, last session for today is on business valuations. Uh, we have with us uh, CA Vikram, uh, who's going to speak to us on business valuations. A quick uh, introduction about uh, CA Vikram. Uh, CA Vikram is a senior associate director, risk and transaction advisor services with uh, in MBG corporate services. He has more than 14 years of experience in process reviews, fraud analytics and investigation, internal audits, operational and financial control reviews, valuations, financial due diligence, IM and teacher operations. He has led teams and managed range of consulting assignments, including process improvements and uh, assisted in developing SOPs for various business functions. Prior to joining MBG Corporate Services, uh, CA Vikram has worked with big fours and repeated consulting firms. Uh, please join me in welcoming CA Vikram. So today's topic is valuation service, business valuation or a valuation service. Valuation service is always a very subjective topic because let's say A valuer can give a value of an organization as 10 million, a B valuer can give or a value of an organization as 12 million. So it's already always very subjective. And uh, methodologies which are followed for the valuations, there are many and it could be dependent upon the transaction, it could be dependent upon few other aspects, uh, like which methodology is appropriate uh, for the transaction. So in this session, we'll cover uh, a bit on transaction advisory, our understanding situations when the valuation is required, what are the methodologies which are used, approach, uh, what are the advantages of valuation, what is the output, and one sample case study of the project which we have done in the past. So in transaction advisory services, few aspects which are required to be covered are business operations, financial statements review, revenue, costs, etc. Primarily from the FDD perspective, financial due diligence. However, if we see service ecosystem from buy side or sell side, you will find one common thing which is valuation. At the initiation of the transaction, investor or buyer will always ask for, okay, what is the tentative value from your side? So as a starting point of a sell side, seller has to give him a valuation report. And once everything is done, like financial due diligence, legal tax, and uh, technical due diligence is done, then of course, valuation is always done from the buyer side as well, considering their business plan and considering observations of FDD, LDD, TDD, and ta uh, technical due diligence, in case there are any. Then accordingly, that has to be adjusted from the value. In case, suppose my value is coming as 10 million, but my observation says that there are two millions of uh, of, of balance sheet item, let's say receivables or asset, which I'll not be able to materialize. Then I'll have to deduct that at the time of finalization of the value, of course, after discussion at the next stage, which is negotiation. So important thing is to understand what is valuation. It's a set of procedure which the other person is ready to pay you. Uh, uh, it's, it's a set of procedure uh, from which you get a value which the other person is ready to pay you. There are different methods of valuation which are used. And uh, while performing valuation, you need understanding of internal as well as external factors. Internal factors means you must be aware about the operations, you must be aware about the financial plan which they have created, whether they have created it correctly, all the things are matching it up from my previous records and the market sentiments as well. And uh, this valuation, I would say, it's a mix and match of both. It's a mix and match of art as well as science. I would say that. Moving forward. Of course, valuation is a critical part for merger and acquisition transaction. However, there are few other aspects as well wherein valuation would be required. Suppose let's say I am doing some internal restructuring. As on date, uh, there are two shareholders, A and B, 50-50%. Now A is saying that I'll sell 25% of the shareholding to B, then of course valuation is required. As per my clauses of memorandum and article of association, what clauses I have updated in that. Then of course, we have seen few transactions wherein uh, in few litigation cases, court of law orders, okay, do the valuation. Then in case of debt financing from bank, bank of course ask for a projections of a plan, projection plan for, uh, for the project, but sometimes they also ask for a valuation report. Okay, give me the valuation report, which is, uh, which is being done by appropriate authorities. 
then we have also seen few transactions wherein funding is coming from my group company. Let's say group company is in Japan, the funding is coming from them in, in the form of increase in the paid up share capital. My article of association memorandum says that valuation, the share capital has to be issued on the valued report from the auditor. So valuation is required in that scenario as well. So it's not only the m and transaction. There are other situations as well wherein valuation would be required and would be important. Now, there are few key methods which are followed for valuation. In case you see the slide, first is DCF, discounting cash flow, which is also known as free cash flow to the firm. Second is market multiple, market multiple on the basis of revenue or on the basis of my earnings. Earnings could be EBITDA. Third one is on the basis of my NAV, net asset book value as on date, and uh, liquidation value. Third one is market capitalization. So in case we are following DCF methods, so there are pros and cons to all the methodologies. In case I'm following the DCF method, I'll take a projection for five years from my, from my target company or for other purposes, then discount it out on the basis of WSCC, weighted average cost of capital, and calculate the value. Of course, I'll also consider terminal value. Now the problem with this method is whether those projections, my, my business will work according to that is a big question. Second thing, let's say I'm taking only five years of, a, of a, a, a financial projections, and after that, I'm calculating terminal value. But I'm not sure whether this business will, will continue till 20 years, 25 years, the value in that scenario will not be correct. Then weighted average cost of capital, in case I'm calculating all the contrary risk premium, equity risk premium, beta, those factor has to be judged into. And important thing is, this method is recommended by IVS, International Valuation Standard. So as far as we have read valuation in our tenure of, uh, let's say, 10 to 12 years, this is the most common method which is used for valuation perspective, DCF or FCFF. Then second one is revenue or earning multiplier. In revenue and earning multiplier, what we do is we take revenue average from, let's say, for, from past five years and multiply that with the multiply, uh, multiply that with the revenue ratio of a similar organization, similar organization operative in the market. Now the problem with this method is uh, whether the multiplier which the other company uh, uh, is, is, able to, will, is able to achieve, whether I'll be able to achieve that or not, that's a big question mark. And of course revenue is a top line. And uh, 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 whether my earnings are as per the industry standard or not, that is a big question mark. Second method is similar, earning multiplier, wherein we take a bit up multiple of the similar organization and then multiply it with my average uh, earnings for past, let's say, five years. Third category of uh, valuation method is book value, which says that, okay, on 31st of, let's say, December, my book value is 100 million, my value is 100 million. Fourth method is Calculate the liquidation value. Let's say I have asset base of uh, 50 million. I, I appoint a fixed asset valuer who value it out at, let's say 25 million. So my value will be 25 million minus liability of 5 million, 20 million will be my value. But the problem with this NAV or liquidation value method is this, this, this methodology takes into account only the value as on particular date. Let's say I'm valuing at 31st of December, this will not take into account the future value, which the other perspective will be able to generate. However, we have seen few transactions wherein agreement between target and the buyer would be like that. They, they, they agreed on the uh, on valuation methodology, which is net asset. We asked them why, why is it so? Because uh, this will not take into account the future perspective of the organization. They said that this we have agreed with the target company. So this method is generally not followed. DCF is the most common method, which is also recommended by I IVS. And second comes the mul market multiplier. NAV method can be followed or cannot be followed. Market capitalization method is the simplest method wherein uh, in case the company is listed, they can multiply uh, their share price with the equity, uh, number of equity shares. And market capitalization value will come out. So important thing from this slide is, 
uh, method which should be followed for the transaction or for some other internal restructuring purposes has to be decided on the basis of discussion on the basis of on the basis of transaction sentiment and then things has to be take, uh, taken forward then in 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 uh, this slide we have mentioned few critical information which are required from valuation perspective the most critical uh, information which would be required in the valuation is projected cash flows projected cash flows some people might say that we'll take into the account projected cash flow and give the value but important thing is you will have to review those projected cash flow in case i'm saying that my revenue is 100 billion today and in the next projection year in let's say in 2024 i'm saying that my value would goes to 200 million then how is it possible in the previous previous years i have grown at the rate of 5% only then how will i double those value that has to be documented whether you have some contract materialized or if, uh, uh, or some some new products are coming some new services are coming which would add to this value that has to be documented that has to be documented in your valuation report then of course there are few other data points like previous year financial records which needs to be analyzed in terms of ratios in terms of sales in terms of cost of sales interest on debt rate debt and equity structure this is required for calculation of weighted average cost of capital restricted in case there are some restricted cash flow then at the time of valuation those cash flow has to be subtracted fixed asset value report is required of course in case i am going for a liquidation value of uh, liquidation valuation so the critical thing in this slide is the review of projections we cannot write that okay i have taken the projection from this this is the responsibility of 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 my client we'll have to review it out then accordingly draft assumptions and accordingly take it to the account at the time of closure of report then approach being followed at the time of valuation firstly you will have to understand what is the transaction rationale whether it is for buy side sell side whether it is for some internal restructuring whether it is for some other purposes then finalize the method finalization of method would depend upon the situation on the depend upon the sentiments of the transaction like in few transaction we have seen nav in few transaction we have seen multiple method in few transaction we have seen only fcff or dcf method then accordingly determine the inputs in few of uh, in few of the valuation projects we have seen that uh, on the basis of financial only we can give the value but in few of them we have asked for the multiple data points then accordingly assess the value and give the report this is the complete approach we generally follow for valuation activity then at the time of doing a valuation few critical aspects needs to be considered like review of the projections which i talked about calculation of wscc wscc calculation depends upon many things risk free return what is my beta which is a critical factor what is my equity risk premium from where i am taking those those uh, risk premiums whether i am including some additional risk premium then what are the basis for that any adjusted default spread which i am taking into account what are the basis for that growth factor this is very critical because this will impact my terminal cash flows now in case let's see let's take an example in case i say that my organization has grown at two uh, let's say at 5% and industry growth is also 5% then on a conservatism principle i can take 2% growth but not more than 5% because i do not have any basis for that basis has to be documented at the time of valuation every basis has to be documented of course review of historical financial is a critical aspect while review of the projection as well multiple right? these are few benefits which we have jotted down for valuation activity like realize accurate valuation and uh, negotiation in case i have a valuation in, on the table let's say of 10 millions and then i can negotiate with the with the buyer or the seller uh, it's a, it, it gives me higher bargaining power whenever i do a valuation it gives me a better decision making let's say how to restructure my organization in the coming time it helps us out 
Then what are the deliverables? Deliverables, of course, include report, calculation sheet. The most reported deliverable is this assumption listing. You have to have a detailed assumption listing on the basis of which valuation is conducted. Valuation is conducted. And this assumption listing is a, I would say, Bible for a valuer. OK, on these assumptions, I have done the valuation. Let's say I have taken 2% of a growth in case uh, some someone else take 4% of growth, then of course value would change because it's a subjective topic. So assumption listing has to be drafted on a very detailed manner, very detailed fashion, and accordingly evaluation needs to be completed. Of course, calculation sheet would be the part of that which will run into the number of number of pages. Then this is one of the case study wherein uh, we were involved for buy side transaction we did financial due diligence legal tax uh, legal and tax due diligence and after that buyer company told us that please do a, a valuations on the basis of dcf methodology which is also known as fcff then as a next step what we did is we take we took business plan from their side we analyzed those business plan and finalized that business plan once this business plan is finalized then we calculate the value on the basis of FCFF, taking into account WACC, which is applicable for that region. And accordingly, uh, our deliverable is being submitted. So uh, if I may conclude this session, valuation is always being a very subjective topic. In case. Uh, you are doing a valuation, you have to be very clear about the transaction, what is the rationale of that transaction. And in case, uh, and all the assumptions has to be properly documented to safe side yourself from any future liability in the report as well as in the uh, calculation sheets. Those has to be documented very well. Uh, hi Vikram, wonderful session. Uh, you uh, very adequately put light on the methods of the valuation. I just want to have an, uh, your uh, input on the subjectivity of the methods of valuation. Like, uh, it, uh, you, as you said, that it's, it's very subjective to apply DCF and it's very subjective to apply liquidation value. So if you could just give some practical example, for example, say real estate and for example, for manufacturing concern, what do you think that which method would, would suit uh, real estate or for example, for per se and uh, manufacturing? So just I, I would say in case the industry is stable and it in industry is already, let's say, into the growth part, let's say 10 years has already passed on, then I would say that DCF would be the best methodology. In case the industry has recently started, in this company has recently started, it's a startup, then of course I'll rely on market multiple. NAV I would not follow. NAV is, I can follow NAV methodology just but just for a reference purpose only. But the best methodology in case the industry is stabilized, uh, to my mind, would be FCFF model. New industry can work on market multiple, then FCFF, and in case the company is uh, going into liquidation, then of course liquidation value or NAV can be followed. But FCFF model is the best methodology which is generally being followed uh, for the transactions. Yes. The session by saying that seller has to give valuation. Did you mean the value as a value or a valuation report? And won't it affect the negotiation power on either side of the transaction? Uh, in sell side transaction is, whenever there is a m and transaction, investor or a buyer at the initial sales will ask for two documents. First is information memorandum of a, or a teaser which gives a detail about the organization. Then second thing is, okay, what is your tentative value? What is the value expectation from your side? Show me that. Which would also include their business plan because valuation is being done on the business plans only. So this will help out buyer to set the expectation. Suppose let's say seller says that uh, my expectation is 100 million and buyer pocket is only 50 million. Then of course transaction will not uh, go forward. Then buyer will uh, look for something else. So that's why at a starting point of sell side transaction, we have seen in the past that 
valuation report is must for investor to review and accordingly take the decision. Uh, as a token of appreciation for Vikram for the wonderful presentation, may I call upon stage CA Patmana Bacharya, our past chairman and president of IBBG, and CA Sheikh Muginidin from HLB, and our PDC leader, Sheikh, uh, sorry, Shafiq Nilayil, for, for all his effort in organizing this event.